points to ponder. Points to ponder. This uh, teaching is available online at any one of our websites, eagleheartfellowship.org, davidherobedian.com, heartprisonministries.org. Just click on the library portion, and there's a free downloadable booklet. Free. Everybody like free? Free. That's how my Jewish relatives got the Ten Commandments, you know. They said, so, how much are they? They're free. Fine, we'll take ten each. And that's the rest <laughs> of the story. So if it's free, it's for me. Uh, turn with me, if you will, today. Hmm. There we go. Points to ponder. I want to share with you today some points to ponder, questions to ponder, things that will be thought-provoking and move us from one position into another position. Say promotion. promotion. It is time for promotion. Promotion in our thinking, promotion in our ministries. And when I say ministries, 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, you, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, verse 17. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Even as God was in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself, even so Christ is in you and has committed unto you the word or the ministry of reconciliation. That means if you're born again, you've been given a ministry. You're called, you're anointed, you're appointed. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Yeah. What things do you know? Those things that you need to know for your ministry and your calling. We talk about anointed men and women of God, and there are certainly anointed men and women of God. The good news is, if you're born again, you have an anointing from who? From the minister? From the denomination? No. From the Holy One, and you know all things, even as that anointing, verse 27, resides in you, and he, the anointed one, the anointing, teaches you concerning all things, and teaches you to abide in him. You know, it's the anointing that does the teaching. It's not the minister. The minister can put together, you know, five points in a poem. Just like the doctor can be a surgeon and he can cut, but he can't heal. The healer is the one that does the healing. The doctor is the one that does the surgery. The minister may break open the word and unpack this thing, but it's the anointing that does the teaching. We are reliant upon the anointed one and his anointing. What is the anointing? I'm glad you asked. The anointing is simply this. If it could be summarized in one statement. The anointing is God on flesh doing only what God can do. Are you partnered with him? If so, you're partnered with the anointed one and he lives in you. Christ means anointed one and his anointing. Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have an anointing because Christ the anointed one lives in you. 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you, the anointed one, than he, the devil, who's in the world, the ex-anointed one. You know why the enemy hates you when he sees that you become born again? You don't just represent that you have the image and likeness of God stamped upon you. You're not just God's creation. You're God's child, but he sees Christ in you, the hope of glory. And he realizes that he made a horrible mistake at Calvary 2,000 years ago. The scripture says, had he known, he would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Why? Because the minute the, 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 the Lord gave up his life and he was hung up for your hang-ups on the cross, the minute he died on the cross and fulfilled the need for the sacrificial lamb. 
everything twisted and shifted and turned 180 degrees the other direction and you were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Not I, with the blood of goats or bulls, but the precious blood of Jesus. And he was three days in the tomb. The tomb became a womb and he was the firstborn of many brethren. Right. And then the Spirit of God is poured out on the day of Pentecost and you receive Pentecostal power. Not Pentecostal power of the denomination, but Pentecostal power of God himself that flows in various denominations yes. and outside those denominations. Why? Because you have an anointing from the Holy One. Every devil in hell is afraid of you because he's the ex-anointed and you're the freshly anointed. He had his position of honor, but he forsook it because he loved the praise of the angels more than he loved the praise of God. Amen. Whom do you seek to please, God or man? Yes. If I were still seeking to please man, I would not be a bondservant of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Look to your neighbor and says, I see the anointing in you. I see the anointing in you. You're anointed. Look at him. You're anointed. Look at your right hand. Yes. What do you see? Are you a palm reader? No. What do you see? Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, lives in you, the anointed one. And where does he live? He lives in you. And if you see your hand, you look by the eyes of the Spirit and you see the nail-scarred hand of Calvary Ooh. underneath your skin. When you begin to go lay hands on the sick and to cast out devils, here's what happens. When you begin to see it as God sees it in Scripture, you'll begin to release it in earth as it is in heaven. Because this is how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, holy, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done now yes. in earth as it is in heaven. Now faith is mm. the substance of things hoped for. It's not about the future. It's about the now. The future is already set. We know our name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. We know we've been delivered out of darkness and into the kingdom of his dear son. All that is an established fact. It was done for you 2,000 years ago at Calvary. The question is this. Are you going to enforce it on the earth. Yes. These signs will follow them that believe. In my name, Jesus said. You will cast out demons. You will speak with new tongues. Somebody slips you a Mickey, you'll drink it down and it won't harm you because you pray over your food before you eat it. You're on the mission field and you come into a cannibalistic area. You smell something ain't right. It's the smell of human flesh burning, but you're trying to witness the gospel and they lovingly invite you to dinner. And they have poisoned your food so that you can kind of fall out and you can wake up boiling in the pot. But because you are a man or a woman of faith, these things really happen, by the way. It may not happen in America yet. When we're having our fourth meal of the day at Taco Bell, <laughs> while we're struggling for Jesus, uh. struggling with our waistlines. But here's the point. You pray over your food and you drink their food and eat their food that's been poisoned and you suffer no harm. And it is a sign to the non-believers. Why? Because scripture says when you go take, take neither purse nor scrip and eat those things that are placed before you. You pray over your food. It's a supernatural demonstration of the power of the living God. And they say, our God's power have no power over the God that he serves. And now they're ready to switch. Instead of them ending up putting you in the...